Hello, I'm Juan Davies, Chief Creative Officer at KCTMPD at SoCal, and we're partnering with the newsroom of KPCC and LAS on a daily reporter roundup. Let's start with you, John Horn, and more trouble for the theater industry. Yeah, for a lot of people, Disney is where dreams come true, but the company's new focus on streaming has turned into a nightmare for movie theater owners. Not that long ago, Disney was essentially the category killer at the box office with its Marvel, Pixar, and Star Wars movies. The company was responsible for about 40% of all tickets sold at the multiplex. But the pandemic has forced Disney, like other studios, to abandon theaters, thousands of which remain closed. So instead of red carpet movie premieres, Disney moved Hamilton, Mulan, and the upcoming Pixar film Soul to its streaming site, Disney Plus. And now the media giant is reorganizing itself to make Disney's digital platforms, which include Hulu, a top priority company-wide. The world's biggest theater chain, AMC, could become the most prominent casualty of Hollywood streaming push Almost every studio has either postponed the release of new movies or put them on their streaming platforms, and AMC now says it could be broke by the end of the year. And we'll follow that with more bad news for fun and joy in life. We got word today that LA's Comic-Con has been postponed for at least nine months. Mike has that story. Uh, that's right. Convention organizers had just put tickets on sale two weeks ago for what was planned to be a December in-person gathering at the L.A. Convention Center with tens of thousands in attendance. The hope was that L.A. Comic Con would get to be one of the first major live events here under COVID-19 restrictions. Convention organizers say they'd met with L.A. County health officials to see what restrictions to expect when live events are allowed again. Organizers built a COVID-19 plan around those guidelines with restrictions like 25% capacity and requiring masks. But now they're saying that the governor's decision not to reopen theme parks like Disneyland means that events probably won't be returning anytime soon. While some on social media accused this of being a cash grab when they knew the event couldn't happen, organizers are offering the option of a full refund. Sharon has been looking into an effort to get free Wi-Fi to four public housing communities. Sharon, what'd you find out? Well, we know that finding affordable, reliable internet has been tough in some parts of LA. Studies done at USC found that big internet providers have been slow to invest in broadband for black and Latino areas. An internet company called Starry now has a deal with the city of LA to install new Wi-Fi at four public housing communities, starting at the Imperial Courts in Watts this month, and then they'll move to Jordan Downs, Pueblo del Rio, and Nickerson Gardens. Starry service will be free for six months to subscribers and then $15 a month afterwards. It's a fairly low level of service, 30 megabytes per second for both download for streaming and upload for Zoom style conferencing. But here's the upsell. For $50 a month, Starry will upgrade those people to their standard 200 megabytes per second plan. And finally today, we have Jason Cohn here. He's the director of The First Angry Man, a documentary about Howard Jarvis and Prop 13 that's airing on KCET tonight. The documentary is extremely timely given the upcoming election and Proposition 15 on the ballot. And I wonder, Jason, if you could just help explain. Sure. So Proposition 13 is widely considered the most significant law ever passed in California via ballot initiative. In the narrow sense, what it did was to severely restrict tax revenue in California, and that's why it's typically linked to decades of budget deficits. But in the broader sense, which I think is more interesting, it launched an entire era, 40 years, of anti-tax and anti-government sentiment. It's a, a kind of war on government mentality that's made it very difficult for us to solve problems as a nation the way we once did. As for 2020, uh, voters are going to have a very rare chance to reform Prop 13 by changing the way some commercial and industrial properties are assessed and taxed. And proponents say it'll bring an additional 10 to $12 billion a year in much needed revenue. Prop 13 has always been considered the third rail of California politics, though, so it's going to be interesting to see how Prop 15, this reform measure, fares in November. Thank you, Jason, and thank you all at the KPCC and LA East, uh, newsroom. Take care of your health, your family, your neighbor. We'll see you tomorrow.